Hi, so this video is um, designed to go through three examples of solving algebraic fractions. Um, each example is slightly more tricky than the previous one. And hopefully um, by the end of this, if you watch all three, you'll be able to have a go at the task that I have set for you. Um, so solving algebraic fractions, as um, the name would imply, you need to solve it, you need to find some answers. So you need to undo these equations and find a value or values for x or whatever your variable is for the question. So the first example we've got um, has got two fractions um, equal to an integer. So in order to solve this equation, the first thing we need to do is to um, clear the fractions. So get rid of the fractions. In order to do this, we need to work out what the common denominator is for these two fractions. So we've got a 3 and a 5, and the lowest number that 3 and 5 both go into is 15. So in order to clear the fractions, we need to multiply both sides of the equation by 15. Well, taking each step as a, uh, uh, each part at a time, the x over 3, the multiplying by 15, becomes 15x over 3. Plus, well, we end up with 15x minus 2 over 5 equals 6 times 15, which is 90. OK, now we can cancel out the fractions. So 15 divided by 3 is 5. And 15 divided by 5 is 3. So now we have a linear equation to solve, which should be a little bit more simple. OK, we've got some brackets. Let's expand those out. 5x plus 3x minus 6 equals 90. Let's collect like terms. 8x minus 6 equals 90. 8x equals 96. Divide by 8, x equals 12. OK, so once you've chosen an appropriate amount to multiply by to get rid of, to clear those fractions, uh, the answer comes out quite nicely. OK, so that's the first example with integer values as our denominators on the fractions. My second example ramps it up a little bit. So this time, still only got two fractions. But the denominators now have variables in. Again, we want to solve for x. So we want a value or values for x at the end. And again, our first step is to clear the fractions. So we're looking for a common denominator for x minus 1 and x plus 2. Well, if we think back to our denominators of 3 and 5 from previous, we chose 15 because it was the lowest common denominator, but also because 3 times 5 will give you 15. So we know if we multiply these two denominators together, we will get something that is common to both. So I'm going to multiply both sides by x minus 1, x plus 2, in order to clear the fractions. OK, if I multiply the left-hand side by this, I get, now this is where it becomes a little long-winded, we get x minus 3, which is a numerator. We're multiplying by this new common denominator. So our left-hand side will become this. Our right-hand side will become x plus 1, which is the numerator, multiplied by x minus 1, x plus 2, which is our common denominator. And that is all over x plus 2. Now we can cancel to get rid of our fractions. So the x minus 1 and the x minus 1 will cancel, and the x plus 2 and the x plus 2 will cancel. So we've got rid of our fractions, and now we have something a little nicer to see. So x minus 3, x plus 2 on the left, and x plus 1, x minus 1 on the right. OK, let's expand our brackets so that we can then collect like terms and solve. 
right hand side. Well, we're going to end up with a quadratic. x times x, we've got x squared plus 2x minus 3x. We're going to have a minus x there and a minus 6. Okay, so that's our left hand side. Right hand side um, should spot straight away. I hope that you've got a difference of two squares so that uh, the x part's going to disappear. So you've got an x squared minus 1 there. Right, solving. So we want all on one side and we want to collect like terms. Well, both sides actually have got an x squared. So we could take away x squared from both sides. So they would disappear. Now, I've got minus x minus 6 equals minus 1. Let me add 6 to both sides. I'll get minus, six, uh, minus x equals... Minus 1 plus um, 6 is 5. So if minus x equals 5, x must equal minus 5 by multiplying both sides by minus 1. And that's our solution. So a little bit more stodgy, uh, a bit more long-winded, but the same general principle. OK, so that's our second example. Now our third example, again, a little bit more difficult. OK, I've got three fractions now, three algebraic fractions. They have variables on the denominator. So in order to clear the fractions, I need to find a common denominator again. So in order to clear these fractions, I want something that goes into 3x minus 5 and x plus 2 and x minus 2. And the best way to know what this is is to multiply them all together. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 3x minus 5, x plus 2, x minus 2. Then we know we have factors of all the denominators. So we'll be able to cancel. Right, this is going to become quite long-winded again. So both sides are going to multiply by this. So our first term here will become 9, 3x minus 5, x plus 2, x minus 2, all divided by 3x minus 5. The middle term becomes one lot of this, 3x minus 5, x plus 2, x minus 2, and that's all divided by x plus 2. And our third term is 4 lots of this long factor. And they're all divided by x minus 2. Now once all this is written out, hopefully you can see all that, we can cancel. So 3x minus 5 and 3x minus 5 will cancel on the first term. We've got x plus 2 and x plus 2 on the second, and the x minus 2s go on the third. So we end up with something a little more straightforward. So we've got first term 9x plus 2x minus 2 plus, and we've got 3x minus 5x minus 2 equals 4 3x minus 5x plus 2. Now it's just a question of expanding and simplifying. We've got a difference of two squares for this first term. So I'm going to have nine lots of x squared minus four. This second one will become a quadratic and we'll get three x squared minus six minus five, so minus 11. Minus five times minus two is positive 10. And that is going to equal four lots of these two multiplied together. So another quadratic, so it's going to be 3x squared. 6x minus 5x is 1x minus 10. OK. Let's finish multiplying them all out. 9x squared minus 36 plus 3x squared minus 11x plus 10 equals 12x squared plus 4x minus 40. OK, getting a bit clearer. Let's collect together the like terms. So I've got 12x squared minus 11x 
minus 26 equals 12x squared plus 4x minus 40. We've got the same amount of x squareds, which is quite nice, so we can subtract 12x squared from both sides. Now, I'm going to add 11x to both sides. Minus 26 equals 15x minus 40. And then I'm going to add 40 to both sides. And I will get 15x here equals 14. OK. Now dividing by x, uh, 15 x will equal 14 fifteenths. Again, only one solution. Sometimes if you're left with a quadratic at the end to solve, you'll have two solutions to deal with. OK, hopefully you've followed that through. If not, try re-watching or uh, get in contact with your teacher and have a go at the task.